Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting Bowser's Keep from Super Mario RPG. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. This is such a dark painting, I decided to work on a black gessoed canvas. I will be covering all of this because it's a bit more matte and a bit rougher than my acrylic paints, but it's a nice base to start from um, just so I don't have to worry about some of the lighter colors showing through and tinting everything a little bit lighter. So I'm working on this canvas, um, and if you can't find a black canvas, you can always buy black gesso and go over a white canvas with that. Um, but I did do a sketch for how my plan is for Bowser's Keep here, and I'm starting in the background working on some of these clouds that kind of sit in this part of the painting. And I did the few little samples in my sketchbook here. Um, I kind of like this one better because I feel it's a bit more organic and a bit more how clouds look. And this one kind of just turned into a smeary cadmium mess. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay down a lot of um, Mars black paint and kind of streak through it some of the cadmium and blend it in to make it a little bit softer. Maybe a bit more like some faraway clouds like you can kind of see like right here in the streak. Um, and that'll kind of help lighten up the Mars Black in preparation for doing the clouds on top. The point of this isn't to repaint the canvas solid black. The point is to have something there that I can blend the cadmium into. If I didn't have that, all of these red streaks in here would be super bright red cadmium. I wanted to kind of tone them down and just kind of do a background that wasn't a solid color. When it's still damp like this, I can take some more cadmium on a smaller brush and start to bring in some of the clouds. And I'm going to kind of just swirl it in like this and start to make cloud shapes and not worry too much about it otherwise. I'm having some trouble putting the clouds on and I think there's just too much black on the canvas. Um, in my test it was a bit smaller and a bit thinner. Um, so I think I'm just going to kind of bring this back to all of the streaks of cadmium and then maybe let it dry a little bit and then start to put some clouds on and blend it down into a little bit more of the streaky red cadmium mix. It worked a lot better doing it on top of the dried background. Also, after the background it had dried, it kind of faded out and what I had done with a little bit of the cadmium streaked through it really wasn't that bright. It kind of faded into a darker color. Um, so I'm really glad I did redo this. Um, the cadmium I kind of put just straight on top of the dried background in this like swirled motion and then I faded it down into a cadmium Mars black mix. Um, and then I faded it more and more into Mars black as I went down to here. And then I went back with more cadmium and did a second row of clouds, faded that into the mix of the two colors, and then faded that into more Mars black and did a little bit of streakiness with the cadmium through here. So I'm really happy with this and um, it's a really good background to start doing everything else. Around Bowser's Keep there's this fence or something made up of rocks. And I drew in this nice smooth line of where I wanted the top of it to go. And now I'm just kind of refining the line and sort of like making these rock shapes up. And I'm going to fill in the tops with cadmium red and fade it down into Mars black, just like the clouds, but it's going to be a lot smoother. I did one of these and I think I have a good technique down. I'm taking some of the cadmium red and just doing the edges and then I'm fading it into a mid-tone between the cadmium and the Mars black and then into Mars black down here. When I have Mars black on the paintbrush, I'm just kind of bringing it back and forth and bringing it up the part of the fence just to kind of push those darks up further so it's not so bright going down. Um, and then I also take a little bit more cadmium and I was doing just a little bit of detail work on these edges just to give it some texture so it isn't just this flat tooth looking thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
I covered up the bottom with some Mars Black because I didn't want to forget to do something and leave raw canvas later. So I did that even though I know a lot of it's going to be covered between the hill over here and then the hill over here, um, just so it's taken care of. Um, next thing I want to do is start to work on the castle here. And I do want it to be like on the first third here on the left and kind of line up on the third here. So I'm going to measure out where that would be. Um, I'm going to take the 24 inch canvas and divide it by three. And then that first measurement is going to be where the very center of the castle sits. This is the progression of my drawing. I kind of did like a rough idea of where I wanted everything to go based around the center line that's on the left third. And then I took a ruler and made sure everything was nice and straight, nice and square. I made sure everything was equal coming off the center line and that like both sides were the same size. From here, I'm going to start adding in some details to the castle, like doing the um, blocks at the top where it steps down and a little bit that supports these top parts of each of the columns. The sprite is so small, and because the game is from the Super Nintendo era, um, there's not a whole lot of lifelike details to it. So I'm looking at castles from the era where they had this sort of top, and I'm looking at how they supported that um, on actual towers. And what they did is they kind of had this little piece that stepped out, and then it curved with an arch, and then stepped back in. And there would be more of those, there'd be like some here, and then one over here. Um, so all of these towers are going to get that treatment, anything that needs like a support for an actual castle tower. Um, and then I'm going to do some of the windows based on that same era. I rounded all the bottoms of everything, so like this is kind of rounded, and this one here, and then this here, just to kind of make them a bit more elliptical and a bit more curved, otherwise they didn't really look so round. And I didn't do the tops of them, those are still kind of squared off, and I feel like they should be rounded. So I'm kind of putting my horizon line here, um, right above like this mountain range, so everything on the horizon line should be straight. Everything below we should see a little bit of the top and everything above we should see some of the bottom So like the bottom of this tower here I should see a little bit of that and then the top of this one I should see just a little bit of the top So I'm going to make some adjustments with the chalk pastel and then we'll start painting A couple of things about painting this castle Normally, when I paint it, I would do like the whole layer with white so I don't have any of like the differences here between the two colors showing through. And then I do the base layer, and then I do the details and shadows, and kind of work my way through it that way by doing the whole castle in one step, and then the next step is the whole castle again. But um, I really think it would help me out if I kind of break it down smaller. Like if I did this whole tower, and then this whole tower, and then this whole tower, and this whole tower, and worked that way. Just because I've drawn so much detail, I'm going to forget where it all is if I paint over it. Um, and I think it'll really help me focus on all of that detail by doing it first and doing it smaller. Plus, I'm doing the smallest one first, so it should be the easiest, and I can start to figure out how I want to do things on this one, and then apply what I've learned to the other towers. Art is all about learning the rules of things, and then just kind of figuring out what works for you. I really like to work with small, um, sturdy paintbrushes that have a good snap, but some people really prefer the soft ones because they let um, you paint a bit more looser and not so perfect straight lines like I do. Um, so everyone's going to have a different style in how they do it, and the great thing about acrylic is once it dries, it's set there, it's permanent, and you don't have to worry about doing things. So you can kind of make up all these layers and learn what style works for you. Um, the second thing is my color that I'm using. So on my palette, this is the base color that I have, and it's a light gray with a little bit of red in it. 
So what I did is I took my titanium and my Mars black and I mixed them together to make a gray. And then I wanted to add some red just because the gray I had was very cool. And this painting is very warm. And I didn't want to add cadmium because I've been using so much of it and cadmium is actually really expensive. Um, so I took some primary magenta and it's very, very pink. I don't know if you can tell compared to the cadmium, but the cadmium is a lot more of a blood red where this is more of a pink. And I didn't want a pink gray on top of my castle. I wanted it to be a bit more of like an orangey red instead of the pink. So I started by taking the magenta and mixed a green into it. This is Jenkins green. And I didn't really like how it looked, so I thought I'd try again. And I made up my own green with cyan and yellow. And I mixed that green into the primary magenta and I made more of a cadmium looking color. So I took that and mixed it into the gray and I got the perfect gray. So I'm using that as my base and I'm going to fill in kind of like this part around the arch, but not the cap. Um, and then I'll do the detail for that part and then I'll move on to the cap. And the cap is going to be a lighter gray, so I'm just going to mix more titanium white into the gray I have. I know I said I was going to do each tower fully before I moved on to the next one, but after finishing this first one, um, my hand started to erase some of the chalk and I was losing some of the lines I had drawn. Um, just because my hand was on the canvas and kind of like um, moving the chalk around, I was getting like chalk marks out into here. And I didn't want to lose the detail I had done, that's why I wanted to do it fully in the first place instead of doing like a silhouette layer and losing all the detail I had drawn. So I figured it would be best if I kind of did like a base layer of each section and then while the base layer was drying over here, I went over here and did a base layer. And then I went back and did value. And then I went and did value on this side. And then I did a base layer on this side. So I was jumping back and forth. Um, and I figured doing that much of the each tower before I went and did the detail was a good amount so I didn't smear too much of this chalk. Um, so right now, this one, this one, and this one are all done in base layer and the rest have value on them. So I'm just going to keep working that way. These ones um, are going to get their value and then these ones up here will get their base coat and then their value. And then I can erase any of the extra chalk just so it doesn't smear anymore. And then I can go and start doing the details again.
This texture is pretty fun to fill in. I'm doing these circle shapes for these stones, and they're not perfect round. Um, I'm changing them up. Some of them are a bit oval, some of them go a bit vertical, some go a bit horizontal. And I'm filling in any gaps between them with this solid grout color. And it's just a darker gray. And then once I do like this whole section of this tower here, I'm trying to obscure the grouting just a little bit by bringing in some of the base colors. And you can tell that here where the grouting is a little bit more obscured and it's a bit darker here because I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm also doing these lintels um, on the bottom and tops of all the windows just to bring attention to it. Plus there would be um, that support to kind of support it from the rocks. Um, so I think that's a nice touch to add. I'm also filling in the last bit of like the teeth at the top of the castle here and kind of bringing in the negative space back in like I did on this one. Um, and this one there's a lot more of an ellipse showing the top and then this one there's less and this is the same um, just because the horizon line is kind of sitting right between these. Um, so after I finish the texture on this part of the castle here, I'm going to keep working my way around this way. Everything about this is very symmetrical, and I had done the castle that way, so I figured I should work on making everything else perfectly symmetrical too. Um, for XOR, I drew a rough idea in and chalk of where I wanted things to go, and then I started to use my ruler to figure out exactly um, how it should be centered. So 8 inches is my center of everything over here. Um, and then I would like count out and measure how far across the sword had to be on this side, and then the same on this side. Um, the biggest width of the handle, I figured that out. Um, how far apart this should be on each side, um, and it's the exact same distance um, from the center 8 inch mark on each side. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm doing down here. Um, this one's just a little bit further because I filled it in with the white paint. But the white is um, the white chalk here is my rough outline of how I want Bowser's face to be on the very bottom of Bowser's keep here. Um, I kind of figured out like where I wanted things to go and how big I wanted them to be. And then you can kind of see a little bit of red like on the nose. And that's me figuring out exactly what is perfectly symmetrical. So I'm using my ruler to line up and I'm working on kind of like the top part of his lips here. And I'm measuring out um, the equal distances. So eight is my center line and the edge of the nose is about a quarter on each side. So I made a little bit of a mark that's perfectly level here where the tops of the cheek um, lips should start. 
And then I went to the highest point, and that's an inch on each side, and made a little mark at an inch and an inch, so it's an inch left and an inch right. And then I did the same with the furthest out piece here, and you can see um, my chalk mark is an inch and a quarter, but I had originally sketched a little bit past that, so I knew that that one was too far. And then I did the same like halfway down here, and then at the very bottom. So I kind of did like this connect the dots measurement to figure out on both sides how big this part should be. So then I can just kind of connect the dots and sketch in where it goes. And I can do the same on the other side and it'll be almost perfectly symmetrical. The reason I did the line art down here and on the wing, claw, feather parts of XOR was so I didn't lose my detail. I spent so much time making this symmetrical and working hard on it, I didn't want to fill it in silhouette like I did up here and lose what I had done. Now, sometimes you have to do that, like on the left side of the sword, because it's going to be such a light gray, I didn't want any of my colors underneath to show through. So doing the white first will kind of cover that and give it a nice like primed coat where it, nothing else will show through. Um, the same with up here, because these are such light colors, I really do need to have it filled in solid. Um, and other parts, if I need them to be lighter, I can like fill them in in pieces and then paint them um, and kind of work in pieces that way. It won't be so bad. Um, but for the sword here, I've mixed up a light gray just using titanium white and Mars black. And I picked a light gray for the left side um, just because I don't want to use white yet because I want to save white for doing like the very edge and the very highlight here. If I use white first um, for the whole thing, then I don't have anything lighter I can go to. There's not a lighter color than white. Um, on the right, it will be darker because all of my lights are coming from the left here, so it'll cast a shadow on the right, and the castle itself will cast some shadow, so I'll be bringing in darker grays to do that. The last part of XOR here is the face and these claw wing parts. So I'm filling in this gold orange color here um, as my base, and then I'll put value on top. And I am doing it in pieces so I don't lose like my details where these lines are and like this bottom part of these claws are. So once I have all the pieces done, um, then I'm going to work on the eyes and the eyebrows. I don't want to mess them up. I really want to make sure they're symmetrical because eyes look very strange if they're not symmetrical. So I want all of this to be done so I can draw with chalk and erase the chalk as I need to. I think the best way to give texture to this part is to um, fill it in with red first and then I'm taking a little bit of black on this old really worn out paintbrush and I'm just tapping it in trying to give it a little bit of this texture.
I had originally planned to add some highlights with cadmium red and titanium white on top of the Bowser face here on Bowser's Keep, but I really like how it turned out and it matches like this mountain range here and the clouds, they're all cadmium red and Mars black. There's no titanium white in the other things, so I kind of like that correlation of how it ties it all together. Um, the next thing I want to do is work on drawing the eyes for Exor, um, just because I knew I needed to wait to do that. I needed to get everything else done because eyes are so important to get symmetrical, otherwise it'll look strange. So I need to make sure they're straight and they're symmetrical, um, and I didn't want to have to worry about painting around those or messing up my drawing of it, so I had to get everything else around it done first. I'm also going to work on refining this front hill mountain, exactly where it's going to go, the shape it's going to be, how big it's going to be, um, so I'm going to work on drawing both of those things. The eyes were done with some value already, I had primed them white with titanium white, but then I started just to take some Mars black and make a gray and just did a little bit of value so they kind of look round. Um, so those are drying and then I'll do the eyelids in white just to kind of block those in because it's so dark underneath some of the sky color. And then they'll get their orange color and I also realized I kind of missed a little bit of a triangle that sits right here and it's the same color as the eyelids so when I do the eyelids I'll just do that too. I also primed this mountain white and then I mixed up a new color which is kind of a purplish blue color and I mixed in some gray to kind of make it more like steel. And so that'll be the base color for this and after it dries with the base color then I can start to add some value and texture on top. With all of this done, it's time to switch focus down here. I um, rounded off the tops of these so they weren't pointy anymore um, because I thought about like, it can't be this like straight up cliff for Mario to stand on. It needs to have a flat top. So I kind of flattened all those points down um, and I drew in these trapezoids thinking about like places to stand on, um, like each level of it. And then like the vertical part is going to have streaks of the highlight color, which is the color with titanium white. And the top part is where the shadow is going to be. So it's going to have the base color with Mars black. I'm working on drawing Mario and because of all of these platforms, I can really put him anywhere. Um, if I had wanted, I could move him back a little bit and kind of isolate him here inside the rocks. But I decided it would be best if he was like here or here because he would look more like he's looking at Bowser's Keep and Exor. So I went with this one just because it was a little bit closer to it. And I'm trying to fill it in with chalk pastel first till I get the shapes I like. And the other thing I'm doing, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I have this little scrub brush and I use a little bit of water and I can kind of clean up my lines so I can see them better. Um, and that kind of helps sometimes. Like if I have a little section where I don't quite like the line but I like everything else around it and I can't do like a nice fine detailed erasing with my washcloth, I can just take this scrub brush and a little bit of water and kind of clean things up a little bit. I roughed in Mario with chalk pastel and then used a liquid white and a tiny paintbrush to refine all of the lines. When it was dry, I erased it with um, a damp towel just to get rid of all that extra chalk because it was kind of confusing. And I'm going to start with a limited palette and not like put every color I need on my palette. Because acrylic dries out so fast, um, it's kind of worthless to do that. I'm also working with very small amounts of paint, like just tiny little drops from each of my bottles. I have Titan Buff, and this is kind of my skin tone. 
um, and it's kind of light, I think, so I might mix in some burnt sienna. But burnt sienna, burnt umber, and Mars black are going to kind of be my shoe colors. And if I need to lighten it up a little bit, I have some titanium white. For the hat and the shirt, of course I'm going with cadmium red to tie it in with the rest of the painting, but the overalls are another story. I could go with straight cyan um, out of the tube, but cyan is very green, well at least compared to the rest of the blues I have here, which is all of this. This I made very violet, and I don't want to go that violet for the overalls, but I don't want to go cyan, which is too green, so I kind of want something in the middle. So I took my cyan and mixed a little bit of magenta into it to make it sort of into the indigo, like a denim color, and that's going to be the base for the overalls. Um, and then the gloves are just going to be white with black shading, um, just to kind of bring more white to tie into here. The last thing I have to paint is a little bit of a shadow underneath Mario, and to do that I'm just going to use some of the darker colors of the rocks and just do a little bit of an oval underneath him. And we're done! We have Bowser's Keep from Super Mario RPG. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a foam case or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.